Now to the story of Ari Kumban, the lone wild tusker who caused havoc in Tamil Nadu's Kambam town a few days ago, he remains in the news. The Kerala High Court dismissed a public interest litigation asking for Ari Kumban to be relocated to Kerala from Tamil Nadu. The court observed that the Tamil Nadu government has offered to take Ari Kumban deep into the forest and found no reason for the tusker to be relocated to Kerala. Meanwhile, the Tamil Nadu government announced a compensation of 5 lakhs for the family of a man who died when the tusker went on a rampage in the state's Thani district. It has also set up a large team to capture Ari Komban. Joining us now is K.A. Shaji, Senior Assistant Editor of South First from Kerala, who's an environmental journalist and tracks elephants and man-animal conflict very closely there. Shaji, just take us through the story of Ari Komban. It's not something that started today or yesterday. It's gone on for many years, right? Yeah, yeah, not years. In the last three, four months, Kerala has been closely watching this Ari Komban. And Ari Kumban has been creating news continuously. And there are many organized attempts, right from the beginning to demonize Ari Kumban. Some people created a false propaganda that Ari Kumban is a killer who killed more than 14 people. Now the number has been reduced to seven. And another level, right from the beginning, there was an organized bid, mainly on the part of the Kerala government, Kerala government forest department, to catch the elephant and keep him in permanent captivity and to train him as a kungi elephant if possibly to capture more elephants to assist in the catching of other trouble making elephants but the problem is there were some inherent faults in the operations and these faults go down to a difficult situation in which the elephant was released close to the Tamil Nadu border and the elephant crossed the border and now it is creating tensions in Tamil Nadu. So if the government had executed its plan wisely, if it had consulted experts and it tried to ensure an equilibrium conserving or protecting the interests of both the wildlife and human life, there must the problem must have been solved in advance. So, so now it is a very difficult kind of situation. Sh Shaji, Sh Shaji, just tell us the story of these elephants. I mean, uh, as you were explaining earlier, it's not just about Ari Komban, right? There are other elephants as well who have who become notorious in that area. We don't know whether they belong to Tamil Nadu or Kerala because the forest belongs to everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this forest area of the entire south. It is a continuous territory. There is no geographical barrier. It is extending in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and Kerala. And in the case of this particular region, Arikumban was quartered for the last several months in a place called Chinnakaranil Yudiki. It is a hill area. It is a core area of the Western Ghats. And more importantly, it was quartered in a traditional migratory path of the elephants, not outside the forest. But the sad, thing, the, sad, the sad thing was, in 2002, the then Kerala government led by A.K. Anthony, it allotted land for 301 families in that locality. And 301 landless families, the poor families have been assigned land in a traditional elephant territory where there, is, there are every possibility for attack on elephant or the people. So that, there began the problems of this locality. And in the case of the Arikomban, as I said earlier, the name Arikomban is because of he is regularly raiding the ration shops. He is regularly raiding the ration shop and eating rice and jaggery kept there. That is why the people is, are calling him as Arikomban. In Malayalam, Ari means rice and Komban means tusk. And there is another elephant in the same area. His name is Chaka Komban. In Malayalam, Chaka is jackfruit. So he is famous for moving into the human settlements and plucking the jackfruits and eating the jackfruits. And there are other uh, others like Motta Wallet. Motta Wallet's uh, his, uh, tail looks almost like an egg. And uh, th there is another person, another elephant named Padayappa. Padayappa is almost a kind of, uh, he has a behave behavior pattern similar to that of Rajnika. So there are many such crop raiding elephants in the Idukki district in Chinnakalan and surroundings. But the important thing is that Chinnakalan is fundamentally a forest area in which the government wrongly rehabilitated 301 families, the landless families. And wow. over the years, because of the intensity of the human wildlife conflict, these people started moving away. Now hardly 50 families are remaining there. 
the rest of the people already left and they already found alternative living conditions. So the, there was a proposal, even now the proposal is still pending with the government to right. relocate the remaining 50 families of this 301 settlement. Right. And ignoring that proposal, instead of translocating the people trapped inside the animal corridor, the government translocated the elephant. Right, then thanks. the elephant is moving around. The elephant was severely injured during the operation. Mm -hmm. And once it was released, it was moving around looking right. for a permanent settlement at one level. Or there may be possibilities of it is searching routes to go back to its old uh, roaming ground of Chinakana. Right. Right. Thanks so much, Shaji. We'll keep a close track of Ari Komban and as well as Chakkai Komban and uh, Padayapa and all the other elephants in that region. You keep track of those. You let us know when any of them come out of the forests and there's always news around them in that Western Ghats area. But the larger issue really is one of man-animal conflict and receding forests in those areas. We'll keep a track of those, but that's all we have time for on this show. Thanks so much for watching this news break at 7.